Hey, I'm Andrew. I'm going to show you a new way of modifying the Amazon Echo Dot second generation smart speaker to provide an extra point of security against microphone attacks. I made this video to inspire an alternative way of looking at smart device modification by using external controllers rather than entirely replacing components or hacking the firmware. I'm not going to use the word hack for my methods because usage of that word has grown to include activities like malicious network manipulation and hot gluing popsicle sticks to things. So a modification that feeds entirely off the host device without changing its software or features, like a parasite, is a pretty good way to describe this. To demonstrate this, here is my Echo Dot, which responds to commands like, Alexa, what time is it? The time is 7.03 p.m. This is normal behavior for the Echo devices. Now, my modification utilizes a Seduino Shao microcontroller, which is already inside this dot. So now I can press the volume up and down buttons simultaneously, and it will give me about four boops to inform me that the hardware mute has been enabled. Now, I can ask Alexa anything, and there's no response. Alexa, Alexa. Even if I press the action button once, which triggers the same response as speaking Alexa, what time is it? What's the weather? It will just time out because it can't hear me. But I can press the volume up and down buttons again and will boop a couple of times to indicate listening is restored. Alexa, thank you. You bet. Now we're back to normal. Why take the time to add a modification like this? Well, for me, it was a fun project, but it's not without adding value to the security of the growing smart home market. Researchers have presented possible attacks against smart speakers through conferences held by the Eucenics Association, which provides presentations and papers online free of charge. I reference these papers because the attacks presented there can be performed long range, especially with a clear line of sight or open window. But for more technical details on those attacks, you can check out the references in the video description. One of these attacks involves using human speech modulated to be transmitted at ultrasonic frequencies, so you can't hear it, but because of microphone nonlinearity, devices like the Echo Dot can still register the ultrasonic speech and process the commands. Your dog would not enjoy it, but you may only hear some clicking sounds. Another type of attack is a laser attack. Apparently, lasers can be modulated to carry the same variations as sound waves and this energy can also be picked up by microphones and recognized as human speech so that the device processes the command. The real danger with a microphone attack is what an attacker can do if you do not have adequate security set on your devices. For example, if your smart speaker has no voice recognition and is linked with smart home features, a tech-savvy attacker could let themselves into your home, spy on your family, or heat up your home to kill your chinchilla. My modification prevents the microphones from transmitting anything to the processor, inhibiting the smart speaker from receiving any commands. Also, this mod causes the Echo Dot to boot up in the hardware muted state, so even an attack on your home power will not help them, unlike the built-in software mute, which boots up in the unmuted condition. You are now only vulnerable to the latest network attack, of which there have been a few. Now I'll move into the details of the project. My initial idea was to create a mute feature that was not dependent on the Echo Dot software because people have varying levels of trust dependent upon their opinion of smart home technology and security. My personal level of distrust is mild, but I absolutely trust open source devices which I program myself. Here I want to thank Sasha Schmidt for the work done detailing most of the test points on the second gen Echo Dot on his blog, which was incredibly helpful for my project. I wanted the smallest Arduino style microcontroller that still has a USB connector. For this, I chose the Seduino Shao because it has several digital input output pins that would be useful in grounding the seven microphones. Since there are no easily accessible test points for the microphones, I switched my focus to the four analog to digital converters, or ADCs, that share a single data line using inter IC sound communication standards. This data line has an accessible test point labeled TM10, and grounding this point prevents any audio data from reaching the processor. This is achieved by wiring it to a pin on the shao and writing that pin low, setting it to a zero volt state. Using an ammeter with its test probes on TM10 and a ground pin, I determine the data line causes a four milliamp current draw on the circuit. 
I kept doing this for longer periods until I was satisfied the 4 milliamp draw would not damage the ADCs. Thankfully, I noticed the default Shao digital pin current limit is 2.5 milliamps, but by modifying the output driver strength bit of the Shao's pin, we can raise this limit to 10 milliamps. I chose to use the volume buttons to trigger the hardware mute because I did not want to affect any existing feature of the dot. Test points TM33 and TM34 read 0 volts when pressed, so by sensing these with Shao pins in input mode, with a little debouncing of course, we can turn the new hardware mute on or off. It's good to get some feedback to know the mod has been triggered. To conserve on wiring, I chose to use the same Shao pins connected to TM33 and TM34 by changing them from inputs to outputs and writing them low, forcing them to 0 volts, which causes the same dot response as pressing the buttons physically. The dot now makes its boop sound twice when it's hardware muted and four times when it is unmuted, alternating up and down so your volume ends up at the same level. I wanted to use the dot's existing software mic mute button, but any attempt at grounding or powering this either overloaded the dot circuit boards or the microcontroller, requiring a reset, or did nothing at all, so I did not pursue that path. I left the action button alone because there are already multiple button press combinations for it and I did not want to inhibit those or have those actions accidentally trigger the hardware mute. All of the Arduino Shao programming was performed using the Arduino IDE. I'll briefly walk through the code for this. In the declarations, the pins are given names and the boolean variable that stores the mute state is declared. In the setup function, the three pins are set as input pins so they exist in a high impedance state, meaning they will not have any effect on the dot circuitry. 30 seconds after power up, the shao activates the hardware mute, which is prior to the echo dot completing its initialization process to maximize security. In the loop function, it will check about 20 times per second if both the volume up and down buttons are pressed together. If so, it waits 30 milliseconds and verifies the condition to prevent rapid registration of presses, known as debouncing, and then toggles the hardware mute state if the data line is applicable. In the mute stream function, the muting pin is changed to an output, which automatically writes it in the low or grounded state. Then the output driver strength bit is changed to safely support the higher current draw. Changing pin mode always resets it back to the default zero value, so it must be changed each time. In the unmute stream function, the muting pin is changed back to an input so it has no effect on the dot circuits. And finally, make the boop makes the booping sounds. Next, I'll get into some of the techniques I used to accomplish this, but not without a safety disclaimer first. I'm not responsible for any damage you incur to your property, nor any harm you bring to yourself or others, or your chinchilla. If you don't know what you're doing, then don't do it until you do. I'm only responsible for the microcontroller that I fried while soldering and the DS0 red LED that I destroyed on the dot while poking a nanometer probe around random test points like an idiot. With that out of the way, I would like to say that my work methods are akin to Tony Stark building his first arc reactor in Iron Man with inadequate equipment and a dimly lit environment. I'm far from master of soldering, but my method for soldering wires to 1mm squared test pads is to scrape the surface with a sharp blade to roughen it up, clean it with isopropyl alcohol, put a tiny dab of soldering rosin flux on it, place a bead of solder on that, and heat it up with a soldering iron until it melts into the pad. Place the wire over the solder and heat that solder up until the wire sinks in. Once it cools, tug on the wire to ensure mechanical durability, then cover it with super glue for additional protection and insulation. I also carved channels out of the foam for routing the wires and secured them with super glue, and extra care was taken so that all wires were routed properly when soldering the other end of the wires to the shao. I went through different phases of testing to ensure the project would succeed, or that if it failed, I would know when it failed. First, I proved the concept to myself that using a pin to ground out an electrical path would work and using a pin in input mode would act as if it did not exist in the circuit. I tested this in parallel using both my Arduino Nano Every and my Arduino Shao by connecting the muting pin to an LED that was constantly energized. If you try this, make sure you put the muting pin downstream of the current limiting resistor or else you will fry your board. During this point, I also measured various current and voltage readings while determining the best plan of attack. This is where I discovered the 4 milliamps from grounding TM10, and I would run the echo dot in the unassembled condition as seen above while test probing it to see that the mute did work. 
The next stage of testing involved using the final microcontroller program and the wires soldered to their final test points on the Echo DOS circuit boards. Before soldering those wires to the Shao, I connected them with alligator clips to temporary wires to test the complete functionality of the device with the hardware mute mod. The dot was completely assembled except for the bottom casing shell and speaker unit. As a side note, I never attached the header pins to the microcontroller. In this picture, the Shao has been set on the header pins using friction, which still allows for bench testing the microcontroller. Just remember to remove the VCC wire from the Shao if you need to connect it to USB for reprogramming. Finally, I tested the assembly with everything fully soldered and wires properly routed. I chose to fit the Shao inside the white spacer LED diffuser area. I placed some PVC tape down to electrically insulate the circuit board from the Shao contacts because the DOT circuit board uses surface mounted components. Cutting a square out of the black rubber piece made just enough room for proper operation. The modified DOT has been on in my home for a couple weeks already, mostly in the hardware muted state, except for occasional weather inquiries or radio use, and has had no issues performing its task as designed by Amazon and myself. Legal Talk Currently, the 90-day limited warranty for Amazon smart devices is voided by alteration of the device, so any free service or replacement would be forfeit for doing this, but past the 90-day mark, it doesn't matter. The terms of use only specify restrictions against tampering with the software. The Digital Millennium Copyright Act, known as DMCA by many YouTubers, does forbid modifying devices to circumvent access controls, but my mod does the opposite and strengthens smart speaker security, so the best I can figure is that it does not violate that law. The End User License Agreement, or EULA, is a contract that software users agree to prior to using the software. You may know it as the thing where you scroll down at the bottom as quickly as possible and click Agree. I could not find an EULA for Amazon Voice products. Copyright law in the U.S. protects software and printed circuit board blueprints, but it does not protect the final printed circuit board product. Right to repair laws are being legislated in many of the United States, but these laws only affect maintenance of original equipment, not extra modifications like this. So this rudimentary check at various legal protections shows the only violation I incur is voiding the warranty, which is not a concern of mine. Where can this idea go from here? One idea is having an entire custom open source platform that gatekeeps other platforms. What I mean is Bluetooth or Wi-Fi enabled microcontrollers triggered by a custom app that would allow users to admit or block operation of other smart devices. I'm open to suggestions on cool ideas of what to do with this. It is through continued discussion that we'll all learn more about smart home technology and how best to control it. And if you're looking to collaborate on a project, my ears are open. Thanks for watching. This is my first YouTube video, so please leave a like and comment with any feedback or questions you have. Anyways, I'll let you go with a clip of me brushing my dog, Dexter. Later.